What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rianne Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday. It is Sunday right now while we're recording. Fran, thank you for that nice fist bump. You're, Let's get the yep. party started. started. Woohoo! Fran, how are we doing on this lovely Sunday afternoon? <laughs> I'm good. It's We've been having a little technical difficulties, <laughs> not on my end, on, on your end, which has <laughs> frustrated you, which therefore has frustrated the group. Um, but we're okay. We're, we're in a better place. <laughs> Uh, it's been a long weekend. I haven't done, I haven't done anything. I haven't left. I am in a in a quarantine situation. I'm not sick, but was saw someone who was. So I have been in quarantine now for quite some quite some days, and I'm just barreling through television like I have never done before. And that's about it. That's all I've done. It's been four days. Quite some days. Sounds like you've been in there for two weeks. It's been four it's, days. <laughs> you have. And it's felt like it's felt like four weeks. Friend, you, you can't say you have no idea. I did it last week. I know. But it feels wor- <laughs> it feels worse now because you're doing it. <laughs> Yeah, but, but also you're Fran. You're alone, right? I'm totally alone. Yeah, we so at least had someone else. Yeah, I guess so. That's yeah, true. and a dog. I'm just right. totally alone. You have your like five thousand squishmallows, so that should help. Yeah, no, they honestly, it does. It it does. I snuggle up with them at night. Pleasant surprise. Aqua the sloth, supposed to deliver end of March, came early. Came last week. So now I've got Aqua. He's fantastic. He's a DJ. They all come with bios, which is really <laughs> like a great, the uh, one of the better like traits of all of these. And I, my sister, so funny. She sent me like the, a screenshot. She's really wanted the shark. Like she's real. like she has a shark tattoo. She loves sharks. She really wanted the shark. Someone, they have these like Facebook pages for Squishmallows where like you can buy, resell, trade like Squishmallows. <laughs> And Gia is in some of them. And a, a woman had posted that she found the shark. She had posted a picture of it. She was like, does anybody want this? Gia like immediately messaged her and was like, I need that. Like, yes, please. Like, I'll take it. So now she's getting it. She bought it. She's getting it sent to her. But the the business behind this is unbelievable. Like the one she wants, I think retails at like $10. It's like 10 bucks. She's buying it for $35 plus shipping. Like wow. it's like if you if you live near a store that really has them all the time or like is constantly stocked, g- g- hop on one of these Facebook pages because you could be making quite a decent amount of money here on the on the turnaround. Squishmallows are like stocks. No, it's like the black market of Squishmallows. Like as soon Squishmallows are going to be on StockX. Just wait. <laughs> Damn, that seems that seems it's intense. like people who like rebuy Yeezys for like. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like a it's a massive um, price up up uh, price inflation. I don't even know what the right word is, but yeah, it's crazy. And uh, but but she's happy because she's getting it. And they've been very they're they're nice to sleep with. I'm all by myself, so they're keeping me company. <laughs> that sounds beautiful. Uh, you sent me a picture surrounded by them, but it seemed like the most cuddly thing on earth. It was really cuddly. It uh, yeah. They 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 are keeping me cozy. That is for sure. Um, how was your weekend, Rhea? Wink, I had wink. I had a, raise. Um, I had a great weekend. I did do it. I told the chicks in the office listeners I was thinking about doing shrooms. I did do I it. I did it. I did it. Um, only micro dose though. I didn't like do a whole thing because it was my first, not my first rodeo. I've done micro dosing before, but. I was going to do That's a little what you more like. this time. Like I, you know, I was gonna, just going to try a little bit more this time. Um, great, great experience. Great experience. The way I would describe it is I felt awake yet calm at the same time. Like all of my senses seemed like they were hyper aware. Like I was listening to music and I wasn't choosing to dance my body was choosing to dance. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was feeling out its own dance moves. It was moving in ways. I don't know. My body's moved before, but it, it, it just, I just felt like happy and calm and 
awake. I don't know if, if that makes sense, the word awake, but it was just every like clear. Things were clear yeah. to me. Alert. <laughs> alert. Alert. Is alert a good Maybe word for it? Alert. But not like Adderall alert. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Adderall yeah. alert is like a little stressful <laughs> alert. But this was just like a, a, an awake. I feel normal. Like yeah. I don't. I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> but I was like, I feel normal. But I just didn't feel like the stress or anxiety or sleepiness that I yeah. usually feel. I just felt good. Good. Well, that's good. I'm glad you had a nice experience. Yeah, it was. It wasn't like a crazy trip. I think people were expecting me to be like, "Oh man, it was such a crazy trip, bro." I was seeing like yeah. aliens all over the place. I didn't go that hard. I just right. You weren't like Bell. You weren't like Bell Hadid and Joshua Tree. No, no, no. Type level. I, w- I would love to do that one day, but I want to be in a better uh, circum circumstance. I want to be in a better place. I'd rather be, yeah. um, you know, secluded in a house somewhere nice, tropical right, right. maybe or. Uh, woodsy maybe maybe yeah. joshua tree you know that's yeah. the place everyone goes but that's kind of like cliche though i feel like i can find a better place than that i was just at my apartment yeah and then i went to nobu uh for those great margaritas that i love everybody mm, knows i love, love margaritas there and yeah, i got those margaritas do. and i feel like that kick-started it even a little bit more so it was a great time i had a, i had a really great time and i will do it again and i will do more the next time I feel like I needed to like pace myself a bit. Yeah, um, it's smart. The next time I'll add, I'll, I'll add a bit more. Yeah. I shall add a bit more. Right. It makes sense. You're just gradually getting there. Um, I got to say that, like I said, I have not, I would just watch an abundance of television this weekend. One caught up on WandaVision. Fantastic. I'm glad I caught up for all our listeners out there who are Marvel fans. I hope you're loving it because I watched it all on Saturday night, one to seven. It's fantastic. Really, really enjoying it. Um, love Elizabeth. Lo- you know what? You know who really is just fabulous? Catherine Hahn. Mm. Catherine Hahn is so freaking good at everything she's in. Every movie she's been in, every TV show she's been in. She's absolutely fantastic in WandaVision, but she is just a delight. Like, I feel like there's so many rom-coms where she's such a crucial piece of the movie that she's so good in. Uh, But then, you know, Rhea, you texted Kelly and I being like, you need to, you need to check out Temptation Island. If you got one, like, I know you got, you're like, Fran, I know you have nothing to do all weekend. (laughs) Please at least watch this first episode of Temptation Island. They're on, the season three just premiered. It just came out on on USA. Um, We have not watched it before. We've heard about it. People have told us here or there to watch it. We've always kind of thought like, eh, no interest there's so many reality shows out there. You texted us and was like, this <laughs> guy who hosts Temptation Island is a knockoff Chris Harrison like you've never seen before. <laughs> and it's mind blowing. For all the Bachelor fans, it's worth it to just watch. Like even, you don't even have to watch a show, but you need to watch the intro to just hear this guy speak and act. And you're like, what? In heaven's name, like who cloned Chris Harrison and made him Mark Wahlberg? And on top of that, this guy's (laughs) name is Mark Wahlberg. This shit has been making me die (laughs) laughing for at least five days now because I saw Temptation Island on Hulu. I was like, you know what? I've seen people talk about this. I'm going to give it a shot. I turn it on. I'm like, uh, why does this man look and sound exactly like Chris Harrison. It's freaking me out. He looks like the Walmart version Chris Harrison. Hank said he he looks like, obviously we know Chris Harrison, he's not married or divorced, whatever, but he yes. was like, he was like, he looks like the divorced Chris Harrison. <laughs> like it just, we could not stop laughing. And then on top of that, when his name appears on the screen and says Mark Wahlberg, it, it, it seems like you're watching a parody because this man is Chris Harrison, but his name is Mark Wahlberg. And the show itself is the most insane cops concept I've ever seen on a show. They send four couples to an island and mix them with 10 or whatever, whatever the number is, hot single girls, hot single guys, and put them with the boyfriends and girlfriends in separate houses. So the sing- the, the hot single girls and hot single guys can't even mingle with each other. Their right. main goal is to break up the- Break cu- up these, yeah. Yeah. And flirt with the boyfriends and flirt with the girlfriends. 
And then at the end of each episode, they have a bonfire where they show the girlfriends or boyfriends what they each did in the house. (laughs) It is the most insane show, reality show I've ever watched. It seems like a parody. The whole thing while you're watching it, you're like, this seems like a TV show that's making fun of reality TV shows, but it's not. It's actually a reality TV show. I can't understand why couples sign up for this sort of thing. I I, I will never understand it, but I thank them. I bless them for doing it because now we get this, this great TV show, which is up to its third season. I think the first episode of the third season aired maybe this week or last week. Yeah. And yeah. the other two seasons are on Hulu. If you have like Hulu live TV package, or you could watch it on the USA app. This sounds like an ad. It's not. I just, I watched the entirety of season two this past weekend. Unreal. Absolutely <laughs> unreal. I won't spoil it, but I will say watch it. If you are looking for one of those uh, reality TV shows, like, you know, like Too Hot to Handle on Netflix or The Circle or one of those things that was um, so loved on Netflix. I feel like this show, because it's on USA, doesn't get enough attention where as if- Yeah, that's what I said to you. If if this show was on Netflix- Or or on Netflix, people would be watching the show and talking about it. Oh yeah. It's it's absurd. It feels right up the alley of like Love is Blind, Too Hot to Handle. Like if this was on Netflix- it would 100% be absolutely massive. Um, but I feel like a lot of people just don't know about it. And yeah, you, I don't know what sick fucks sign up for this show. Like you just want to destroy your relationship. I don't understand like these couples that go, because this is a thing. It's not even like The Bachelor where say you're a couple and like they, they did something like this within The Bachelor franchise. You know, when you get on that show, millions of people are watching and like your Instagram followers will go up and you gain some (laughs) social clout and like all those, you know, like there's kind of, it's the whole like, Oh, you're here for the wrong reasons kind of thing. They're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, you could get some fame out of this temptation Island. Nobody knows who these people are like the, the season two people, like they're not these massive reality stars. So they have like 23,000 followers on Instagram, like the payoff. I don't get like, you're just going in to destroy your relationship, which is fine. Um, if that's what you want to do, or like, you really want to, you really want to test your, your significant other. Like there's this couple that's on the third season. They've been together for like 11 years. They've been together since high school and like, it seemed like maybe there were some cheating problems on his end at some point in their relationship. And she's like drop dead gorgeous. She's stunning. She's this girl is beautiful. And I'm just like, it's just funny because they, I feel like they sat down and had a conversation. We're like, you know what? We love each other. We want to get married, but let's go on temptation Island. We can maybe hook up with some other people, like do some weird shit in a confined space for like a few weeks and then when we leave this thing, we'll be good to go. We'll pretend it never happened. And we'll just like, it was like a, ha- a free pass for, for everyone. But it's, it's a unbelievable concept. Um, and yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't watched season two. I just have watched the first episode of, um, of season three, but Rhea, you did text me some of the things that were going down on season two and it's, it sounds, it sounds wild. It really does. And it's funny because when this show first started, USA like did approach chicks in the office to, to talk about the show, like actually as like an ad, like, cause now this isn't an ad. It sounds like an ad. Right. Like, like, and at the time we were like, what the hell is this show? We've never even heard of this. We're not, we're not going to like promote a show <laughs> that we're not watching. <laughs> and now it's funny. Cause we're like, great show. Watch it. Not yeah. getting paid to talk about it. <laughs> right. Right kind of messed up there but we didn't we yeah. didn't know we didn't know that mark Wahlberg, aka chris harrison would be hosting the show oh my god and mark Wahlberg! <laughs> how absurd the the premise of the show is like yeah i just haven't seen anything like it and every episode is kind of the same but it never gets old every episode is them finding out what their significant other did but it just doesn't get old. Every time it's something new and and, <laughs> and you get excited to find out what the reaction is going to be. And the reaction is the same every single time. But I would say you definitely have to watch it. Let us know your thoughts. 
Um, I think it's, I think, I think listeners of this show would 100% love Temptation Island. And I do feel like people are going to be like, we've been telling you to watch Temptation Island for years and you guys haven't been paying attention. It's true. You know what? That is true. They have. I want to say sorry to the people that have been telling us to watch it and we haven't because now we're on the train. But I think it's time to get into today's topics. We have, Mm. obviously, the Kardashians are up to something. Um, Khloe Kardashian, (laughs) they're they're all up to something, obviously. Khloe Kardashian posted a picture and people are freaking out because they think she's wearing an engagement ring. Kim officially filed for divorce from Kanye West. And we have a little spicy note from Kourtney Kardashian to Travis Barker that kind of screams Megan Fox, MGK-esque. Hannah Brown's brother is dating Jed's ex. (laughs) Once again, Hannah Brown's brother (laughs) is dating Jed's ex. Why? I don't know. And Nick Jonas... (laughs) The wonderful Nick Jonas has new music coming out. So we're going to let Fran rave about that. Yeah. Let's get music into it. and his arms. It's a, it's really going to be like half about his arms mm-hmm. and half about the music. Right. Appreciation for both. First. Yeah. Let's get into it. Starting off with Khloe Kardashian's maybe engagement. We have a lot to get to with the Kardashians, but first we want to make sure you are staying safe out there and you could stay safe right now with the Taser Strike Light. It's a rechargeable high power flashlight that can repel. So it's a stun gun mixed with a flashlight. It has both features and it's great to carry on you just to stay safe out there, you know, just to have that extra feeling of safety is always a good thing. And like I said, it has both the flashlight and the stun gun feature. So you'll be able to see clearly and also use the stun gun as well. Um, You can go to taser.com and use promo code Barstool for 15% off. Once again, go to taser.com and use code Barstool for 15% off to get a taser, uh, the stun gun, rechargeable stun gun feature Uh, and the flashlight combined. Like I said, please note a limited number of states we uh, require a permit for use and taser products cannot be purchased for personal use in Hawaii or Rhode Island. So once again, Hawaii or Rhode Island cannot be used for personal use and some states require uh, a permit for use, but go to taser.com and use code Barstool for 15% off. Khloe Kardashian posted a picture on Instagram that seemed like she was supposed to be selling shoes, but really, I think, was a hint at the massive engagement ring on her finger. If this is not an engagement ring, this is some of the best marketing they have ever done. You know, like if this is not an engagement ring, it's absolutely genius because everyone is like, Every headline, everyone's talking like in Chloe's ad for the new good American shoes <laughs> is Chloe engaged. So we're all talking about it and mentioning that, yes, this is an ad for good American shoes. Um, if this was just a regular Instagram post of her in the shoes, we wouldn't be talking about it. We wouldn't be saying, hey, Chloe posted an ad for good American shoes, but here we are. Now, the ring screams engagement ring. I, I don't I don't think anyone wears a giant diamond ring like that. That's not an engagement ring. But maybe that's the whole point. I don't know. I think that's a great point that it could be just a marketing tool because yeah. who would be talking about the shoes? I, I, they release something new. The shoes new. are barely in the picture. Yeah, the shoes are barely <laughs> in the picture. They release something new every day that you know it's gonna it's gonna get marketing but it's not gonna get exactly what you want from it throw an engagement ring in the picture a giant one that may be from tristan thompson people are going to talk about that and now everyone's talking about it it's a fucking huge ring personally i don't really love huge engagement rings like that but maybe it's because i'm not filthy rich like them but when you are so rich it's it's almost like you have to have a huge engagement ring right you can't it, for them, it makes sense because that's like you would just assume that that's what their engagement ring looked like. If one of us walked around like an engagement ring like that, we would look like a giant fucking asshole. Like right. there's that's just that's not normal people stuff. That's so that's Kardashian world that we're that we're not in. And it almost feels like Chloe at the beginning was f- fueling into it. 
Um, and when she's responding to a ton of comments, she's responding to a lot of comments of people being like, you know, eyeball emojis, things like that. Um, Morgan Stewart commented, are they in all caps? And Chloe responded, they, yep, they are. And everyone was freaking out. But then Chloe responded again, saying, my reply was to the question, are they? My reply is, yep, they are. Meaning, yes, the shoes are dropping on February 25th. <laughs> so I don't know. I think Tristan commented too. Yeah, he did. He commented, wow, with a bunch of exclamation points. That grass is cut to perfection. Heart emoji, heart eye emoji, kissy emoji, laughy tongue out emoji. But every comment's like, is this way of your talent? Is this how you're engaged? Are you telling us you're engaged? Kamora Lee Simmons commented eyeball emoji, heart emoji, eyeball emoji. <laughs> like everybody is definitely fueling, you know, fueling the fire here. We're blowing on it. We're giving it oxygen. We're giving it life. This fire is raging now. We all think that perhaps she is engaged. It's if she's not engaged, it's a wild move. And I'm going to need to know where that ring came from. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she was engaged. I, I think that's the next step for Tristan and Chloe because everybody already is pissed that they're they're together or not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people are like, how could she have she gone back with Tristan? She wanted to be with him. And now the next step would be to get engaged. And we all know how fast engagements move in Hollywood. It wouldn't be shocking at all if they were engaged. I just don't know if they would ever make a huge announcement about it because she knows the kind of criticism and the kind of opinions they're going to get, even though they don't matter. Hearing so many people have an opinion on your new fresh engagement would probably be very annoying, even though I feel like at this point in time, they're good at blocking the noise out. They've been dealing with it for so many years, so many different, so many different things have happened with them. But still, a, a fresh engagement you kind of want to enjoy, I'm assuming. So maybe this was her way of just like feeling it out, throwing it out there, seeing what people think. And also, like you said, the marketing of the Smart. shoe. Everybody's yep. talking about the shoe drop for Good American now. Am I going to check them out? Probably because I now yep. know about it. I, Khloe Kardashian, I feel like post a lot of ads on her Instagram that you would usually just like scroll past. And now something like that, you got a huge diamond in the picture. You're paying attention to it. So good move on their part. And if they're engaged, congrats to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, cool, I, know. I guess. But. Either way, I don't know if you wear a ring that large that looks that much like an engagement ring if you are not engaged and on that finger. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like we have to remember the engagement ring is on the ring finger that you would wear if you were engaged. It looks exactly like an engagement ring. All signs are por pointing to engagement ring. Why would we think otherwise? White nails. Everything's done perfectly. She doesn't have any other rings on. You're right, Rhea. I think that is... I think that's kind of what happened here. We'll see. But as of right now, it seems like, hey, there's always been a lot of chatter around um, Tristan and Chloe's relationship. So she knows if maybe she posts this, we're engaged, we're so in love, like this whole thing on Instagram, everyone would make such a big deal out of it, freak out about it. Everybody's talking about Tristan being a cheater instead of, and, and instead of like talking about their relationship or whatever. This was a way to potentially reveal it and also do it to promote her own shoe. So if that is the case, it's genius. We'll see if it's real or not. I Like you said, if this is not an engagement ring, weird move. I guess like looks like an engagement ring, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, probably a duck. So we'll see. I'm sure Chloe will talk about it at, at some point. But on the opposite end of that, the opposite end of the love spectrum, while they're potentially engaged. Kim and Kanye are officially over. It's the end of an era. The divorce has um, been filed. Kim has filed for divorce officially. And you know what? It's it's sad. Like I, I think because everything was so messy towards the end and there are you know, rumors of them fighting and living in separate, separate parts of the house and then not even being together for months on end, everything that happened with Kanye last summer and running for president and everything you, that was what we all focused on, what we we're all talking about. And then when they announced the, when the divorce news came out over the weekend, I think it was Friday. It was just like, Oh, let's, 
people were posting like the good times, the wedding, the engagement, the cute moments they've had on the show where it's like, you know, this is sad. And then, and they have four very small children. Yeah. I think anytime somebody gets divorced or a couple gets divorced, it's obviously going to be sad as for the way it got messy and complicated. I don't think you would expect anything else from Kanye West. I think he's a messy guy. And I feel like, It was going to turn messy at some point. I think that the Kardashians know how to handle business. I know that sounds crazy to some people, but they clearly do. They handle their business very well. They're marketing geniuses. They create all these different products all the time. They just have a constant cash flow coming in, uh, scandals left and right that they always know how to recover from because of Kris Jenner. So I feel like they know how to handle their business in an appropriate manner. Um, Maybe not the Taylor Swift nonsense that was kind of messy on everybody's on everybody's right. part but right. um when it comes to public and i wouldn't really call a divorce a scandal but you know what i mean when it comes to yeah. things like that it's usually it's usually covered well by chris jenner so obviously it's sad for the kids sake i read an article it said north she kind of has an idea of what's going on but the kids are used to them living separate lives anyway so it's not that right. shocking to them which is also sad in itself when you think about a married couple who has four kids together and then realize that they all, they don't even really spend that much time together anyway because of their lifestyles it's sad but it's something they're used to so hopefully everybody's going to be okay. Kim will handle the kids. Kanye will handle the kids whenever they get their time. And it's sad just because it was six or seven years of, of marriage. And it kind of seems like, all right, well, that was fun, but they're going to have to put it in their past. And I'm sure they'll both move on from it fine. Unless Kanye gets on the internet again and starts spewing things about the Kardashian family. I think it's going to go over well. Maybe when the new season airs, is when things will get a little more complicated and messy because we'll be seeing a lot of what's happening with the divorce, I assume. I saw somebody message me and say, do we think the Kardashians is wrapping up now that Kim's business is involved, now that Kim's private life is involved? And I said, I I didn't answer, but absolutely not. I'm The reason yeah. the Kardashians are the Kardashians is because Kim Kardashian. Remember the sex tape scandal that was blown up all over the keeping up, keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah. And Kim that's by what far made, one of the most forthcoming. Yeah. Most open on the show. So I don't think it has anything to do with that at all. I think it has to do with E wasn't paying them enough and Hulu now is. So I think that's the only reason why they're leaving E and keeping up with Kardashians. So it'll be interesting to see how Kanye handles it. I think we know how the Kardashians are going to handle it. We're going to see it on the next season. We'll see Kim write something nice on Instagram and Twitter about Kanye. Will Kanye react on the internet in some way? I would say yes. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's really hard to, it's hard to tell. It's hard to, to comment on with everything that Kanye deals with and it's like how we don't know how he reacts will react to some of these things but if they both are in the right place to take care of the kids and i believe kim filed for like joint custody so hopefully they're they handle that all well but the most interest like now kardashians on hulu if we're getting the same kind of format of kardashians type uh, keeping up type show on hulu single kim haven't seen her in a long time I, it's a whole different aspect to a reboot of a reality show <laughs> that would draw a lot of eyeballs for, you know, a single, a single Kim. We don't really know. Get that new tequila flowing know. in her. <laughs> yeah. She's, you know, she's talking about Kendall's tequila being like, you guys know, I, I don't really drink, but when I do drink, it's Kendall's tequila. <laughs> like, so um, yeah, maybe she's, she's getting back into it a little bit. If she'll start dating, if we see people, who she even thinks about dating when we get um, a new show, but it does kind of feel like they have been separated or broken up or whatever for a long time now. Like it, it was, you know, I think a lot of people would be shocked if Kim was dating someone currently or date someone in the near future because they don't they don't pay close enough attention to know that their marriage was very much on 
the rocks for quite some time. Like you see, oh, she just like she just filed her divorce. Isn't it too soon? Well, it's like, oh, they've been they've been separated for what seems like a, a long time now. So we'll see what happens with single Kim. I feel like that might be the most interesting part of all this. I'm intrigued. I've said it before that I can't see them dating other people because I didn't even see them yeah. dating each other because I yeah. feel like they're both so wrapped up in themselves, which is fine. Yeah. But it I think will Kim be, will. Yeah, I think sure. I think Kim will maybe get out there a little bit and that will be fun to see. And moving on to the next Kardashian topic while yeah. we're on it, same same type of deal relationships. Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker are being a little bit more open on social media. This note was shared. Fran, do you want to read the note? I will read it. It's it's like put a knife in your heart kind of it's <laughs> intense. Um Travis shared this on his Instagram story. It's on a piece of paper that looks like it might have been a little crumbled up, uh, but it reads, to lots of fun adventures, may we destroy each other completely. Love, Courtney. Now, I don't know if this is her regular handwriting, because if it is, a little bizarre. I'm hoping this was an artistic style for the note. Like there's, you know, it's a very dramatic handwriting style. Certain letters have very long lines towards the end. It looks like she really, really took a lot of, um, like she really was very careful writing this, but like Courtney, who are you? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this version of Courtney who writes this? May we destroy each other completely. Okay. Megan Fox, we see you. That's what happens when you date a rock star. Yeah. I'm into it. I feel like the writing is very rock star esque. Totally. It did, is. It did have, it had a, like um, Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie <laughs> vibes, Tommy yes. Lee and Pamela so Anderson, true. MGK, Megan Fox, and now Courtney yep. Kardashian and Travis Barker. I'm into it. <laughs> I, 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 I don't necessarily have much to say about it besides like, cool, cool. Yeah. Good, for, good for them. Good for Courtney. Good for Travis. I'm into it. I know me too. It's we, we have been talking about them a lot recently because they, it does feel like they're making their debut. A lot of stuff on social media, a lot of posts. We're seeing them out to dinner. Um, we I've seen like Travis's children have posted stuff on their Instagram stories, like tagging Courtney. So it seems like families are kind of blending. They're doing things together. And now it's just, it's intense. Like they're definitely having their moment where it's like, all right, we are, we're in love. We're going to tell the world. I mean, may we destroy each other completely. I'm just waiting for Travis to get that tattooed somewhere. I feel like that's bound to happen, right? With the writing that she wrote it. Absolutely. Exactly. Like, I feel like maybe this exact note was actually being taken to the tattoo parlor. And that's why she wrote it like this. And it's probably not even going to be him who gets it tattooed. Many others that are like Travis Barker stands are going to get that tattooed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes you feel something. It does. Like you, when you read, like, may we destroy each other completely. You're like, whew, damn. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> I feel like that's something I would say if I was in the eighties, maybe not now, but if I was living life in the eighties with yeah. Motley Crue perform, performing down the street and heading to their parties and I meet a rock star type guy and I'm like, let's destroy each other completely. Just yeah. do a bunch of drugs and stay up all night or rock and roll. Punk rock, man. Yeah. Punk, rock, rock and roll. <laughs> rock on, Courtney. <laughs> yeah, yeah rock, literally, rock on, Courtney. You guys know it's sometimes the worst feeling is, you know, you finish a workout or you just, you're, you're doing your thing and then you realize you don't have anything to eat. I had this, I went through this this weekend, Saturday. I did my workout. It was later in the day. And then I was like, you know what? What am I going to have for dinner? I, I don't, I, feel like I feel good. I just worked out. I want to do something healthy. And then I remembered that I have the trifecta meals in my fridge and it was perfect. Trifecta makes meal prep, not suck. All of their meals are backed by nutritional science and they taste great and it makes it easier to try to get, get healthy when you're wanting to, you don't have to suffer to eat healthy. Sometimes it sounds like eating healthy is it's a chore. It's hard. Trifecta they send it right to you so you don't have to spend the time, this, all the hours meal prepping every week, and you can stick to your nutritional goals. Their meals have the precise macros people need to gain, lose weight, and to meet their physical goals if they have them. So this is the, their food quality is their priority. They have fresher food. It's farm to fork supply chain. It's supply chain. It's never frozen, organic produce, 
gluten-free, and it's delicious. I've been eating them. They're fantastic. It's fully cooked food, so you, you're, there's no wasted time cooking, cleaning, all that. You finish a workout or you ha- you had a great day. You're like, you know what? I don't feel like cooking. I don't want to do this. You do your meal prep. Trifecta does it all for you, delivered to you. And it's more than just food. It's actually a nutrition program fully. They have an app to help track your meals and fitness and a whole community of customers to support your progress. You can talk about the meals that you love and what you like most about the trifecta meals. So shop meal plans and get 40% off meal prep with code chicks. Go to trifecta nutrition.com slash chicks for this exclusive offer. Once again, go to trifecta nutrition.com slash chicks and get 40% off meal prep with code chicks. All right, guys, some bachelor nation news. That's like bachelor nation adjacent, I guess you would say. Um, We've been seeing these stories and a lot of Bachelor accounts have have posted it. Haley Stevens, who is Jed's ex from like the Jed's ex, like the like the ex that Jed left when he went on to Hannah Brown season, is now hanging out, dating, unsure. Patrick Brown, who is Hannah brown's brother now it's very bizarre doesn't make any like i don't even know how this how this happens but patrick posted an uh, instagram story the two of them hanging out um he wrote ready to celebrate you this week oh no she might have wrote that ready to celebrate you this weekend bud tagged uh, i don't know it's hard to tell who it's like a shared story so it's hard to tell oh no he wrote it ready to celebrate you this weekend bud tagged her and then wrote, put the song American scandal by Ashley McBride playing. And she reposted it and wrote, can't wait, bro. With a little smug, like the smug face emoji and the, and the kissy emoji. And then there was another story of them, like kind of kissing, right? Like it looked like they were making out sort of, I don't get it. What's happening. How do the, how, how does this happen? I hate it all. I hate it all from both parties. I think this screams thirsty from both parties. There are millions of other people on this earth that you can date, but you choose to do this. Like, why would Hannah Brown's brother date this person who didn't cause problems for Hannah because obviously this girl like she couldn't control that Jed left to go on a show and then got engaged to Hannah and whatever, but she's, she's a part of the story. Yeah. So why would Hannah Brown want to be reminded every day about this girl who is now dating her brother? And why Maybe would this girl, love, Rhea? Maybe no, no, no. Love. Why would this girl also go after Hannah Brown's brother. Why would they want to be involved in each other's lives in any way, shape or sh- shape or form to be reminded of the trauma that was caused to both of them? Is it a trauma bond? I don't know. That to me seems strange. It's it's all very strange to me. It seems thirsty on everybody's part. It seems like there is many other people on this earth they could have dated. And I do not know why they're dating each other. Listen, we are all for supporting relationships. We always say, hey, you know what? Maybe we don't think that's the best, but best of luck to them. We feel that way about Claire and Dale. You know, we're not rooting against them, but we just don't really care. These two I think I'm rooting against. I think I, I I don't understand the relationship whatsoever. I think it's weird. I think it's bizarre. And I think they have they could have dated anybody else on earth. I think it's very strange. I yeah, I, I just would love to know how this connection even happened. I guess if she had shared again this weekend, this was the one I was talking about where it looked like they were kissing. They don't actually kiss, but he, she's got her his arm, she has. She has her arms wrapped around him and he says something like he looks up at her. She looks up at him where it's like, they're very close. Their lips are very close. She's looking at him with a lot of love. And she wrote with in quotes, hanging out for my birthday, truly one of my favorites ever. Thank you to everyone who made it so special and tagged Patrick. And he reposted and wrote what in the Alabama is this with a winky face, which is, which is funny, but I, I, well, that's what everyone way, was commenting the way that they're right. Well, the way that they're, that's what I'm saying. Like to, to joke about it, but the way that they, they're posting about it themselves, 
is like, okay, I guess they understand that, that people are laughing about this. I don't know. I just don't. It's just such a bizarre it's bizarre. Such it's weird. A bizarre connection Why? that I need to know, like how they even got in contact with each, with each other. Where it was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Jed's ex. I if know. I was in the situation that Hannah Brown was in, and my brother tells me, I am now seeing Jed's ex, I would say, no, you're not. That's not happening. My brother would also not do that to me. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that girl did anything wrong to Hannah Brown. That's not right. what I'm saying. But yeah, she yeah. is a part of the story that was probably pretty traumatic for, for Hannah Brown to go through. She thought she right. was getting engaged to this guy. She found out there was another girl on the side. Maybe Hannah Were and, they maybe together? Hannah Were they not Haley, together? Like, bonded. Yes. Like, maybe I, Hannah and Haley afterwards, like, became friends because of their hatred for Jed. That does happen, but it's still strange to me. I'm even, with you on it. Being even strange. when people do that, I I get it. People sometimes bond over yeah. assholes that did them wrong, but I don't know how people get that close that they're now like, "Hey, let Hannah's like, let me set set you up with my my bro." Right. I want right. you to date my brother now. I don't know how yeah. it gets to that point. Like you said, maybe, you know, love is love. Maybe they're in love, but weird. Definitely weird. very weird. Yeah, for sure. One of those connections that makes you do the, uh, the blinking eye man. Yeah, like ah. if the blinking, the blinking eye man. Right. Gif. Like, are we sure yeah. about, are we, are, are we sure we're doing this? We yeah. want to go Claire, ahead and do this. Okay. By the way, Claire and Dale still in Florida. Just saw a picture of them holding hands at the pool. So <laughs> good for them. <laughs> it'll end <laughs> oh man and i did see this one thing that i didn't that i forgot to text you about but it just reminded me because i was watching it on the the um, bachelor nation scoop instagram story that had the other stuff the sun which you know take it with a grain of salt the sun tabloid some a lot of their stuff is is not true said that they might just can the entire women tell all this season like, because Chris Harrison's in it so much, like, they might just, like, not even show it. I saw that as well, because I read that they are trying to cut down Chris cut Harrison's part, yeah. parts yeah. as much yeah. as possible to still make the series make sense. Right. And the woman tell all just wouldn't be a woman tell all if, if they had him in it. And I, for some reason, I think some people were, like, really dying for this woman tell all. I think this woman tell all is going to be annoying as fuck. I Just cut it. <laughs> I don't I'm, I don't even care about this woman yeah. tell all. It's just going to be yep. Victoria yelling, uh, calling people hoes and sluts and, and slurs, and then the other yep. girls bullying each other. I, we don't need to see it. We've seen enough of women tell all on this season. So I, I don't even right. think it has to happen. I'm with you. But I'm with you. I know people. Because- I know some people will be like so upset and up in arms about it. I don't think it fucking matters. No, I'm. Let's I'm cut with you to on the that. chase. We yeah, want the finale. <laughs> we want to know who wins. We want to know what happens after yeah. that person wins. Just get us to the end. Yeah, we just want the after the final rose at this point. There's just too. Right. We all have too many questions where it's like, especially especially with the women tell all if. Um, you know, like Chris Harrison had said in the, in that interview, Rachel is not there. So to me, that makes it sound like they're not really going to have any, they didn't, or they didn't have any conversations about any important things. They, they probably just focused on Victoria and the fighting and, and the girl drama and, and all of that, in which case we've got enough of right enough fix. Like we don't need to see it. Don't need to see them. Just like, just scrap it. Just let's move on. Let's end. Let's, let's wrap it up. Yeah, I think that people will be more aggravated if the woman tell all is aired than they will be if it's not. Just because yeah. we'll, be, we'll be so annoyed by, of the drama by then. We're already yep. sick of it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of wraps up a little Bachelor, Bachelor scoop. But Patrick Brown and Haley Stevens, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. quite a combo. <laughs> Guys, huge announcement with Core Seltzer. Some great fun stuff going on. I got to let you know, we love Core Seltzer. It's our favorite seltzer. They have four amazing flavors, black cherry, mango, lemon lime, grapefruit. 
the mango I had over the weekend is just a reminder of the refreshing taste of of summer. It's cold in New York. You want to be drinking a coarse seltzer on the beach. Take one sip of the mango. Takes you back to the beach. It's fantastic. So delicious. And exciting, like I said, exciting news. Right now, you can get your first 12-pack on Coors Seltzer. That's right. You heard me correctly. That's your first 12-pack on Coors Seltzer. Go to CoorsSeltzer.com slash chicks. That's CoorsSeltzer.com backslash chicks. Try it this week. Let us know what you think. If you post it, very important, listen up. If you post it, that you're drinking it, make sure to tag us and tag at Coors Light in your posts. I know you're drinking Coors Seltzer, but tag at Coors Light in your posts and tag Chicks in the Office. And we'll be picking the best submission and giving away Chicks in the Office merch. So that is with a beer purchase is obviously required. So beer purchase required, offer varies by state, must be 21 or older. Visit promorules.com backslash Coors Seltzer rebate for details. Ends on April 30th, 2021. And always guys celebrate responsibly. It's coming from the Coors Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. Big news, huge news. Nick Jonas, solo music. It's coming. He posted this weekend about Spaceman. We've had a feeling that this is where we're going. He was using a lot of rocket emojis. If you did the hashtag Nick Jonas, there's a little, little spaceship came up next to it. He put out a he put out a playlist on Spotify called Spaceman. That's just like a, bo- a bunch of songs about space. So it seems like next week or this week, you know, whatever it is, it's the 20, um, I believe the 25th. No, it's supposed to come out. The tw- yeah, the 25th. So it's Thursday, which is interesting. Kind of confused if that's like he's having a Thursday drop when normally I feel like new songs come out on Friday, but I will take it earlier for sure. Called Spaceman, posted the picture, a lot of astronaut vibes going on. Looks like he's walking on a different planet, on the moon, whatever it is. He is um, not, obviously, I am extremely excited about the new music. We haven't gotten any new music from them in quite some time. The Jonas Brothers, Nick, DNC, it's been, it's been quite some time. So I guess Nick is doing the solo stuff, but the, the cover art for the single is just out of this world <laughs> his arms look unreal his, his muscles arms, are absolutely s- popping there's something very funny about the way nick does his solo music like when nick is in solo music mode he turns he's like this muscle buzz cut guy you know the all the his original s- solo stuff not his original solo stuff because there's been tons of but like the Olivia Culpo era, like close and, mm. and all of those songs was the same vibe. The buzz cut, the muscles, like the whole mm. thing. And it's like, sexy. Nick yeah, Jones it, is it's, sexified. Yeah. Like we, we forget. It's like, he goes to the Jonas brothers. And we're like, Oh, wholesome brother band, the whole yeah. thing. Nick Jonas solo. He's trying to sex it up. This is, he's got the full look, the vest, the arms, the buzz cut. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for he, you. Yeah. He's me specifically. <laughs> um, he, yeah. So, like, you know, that girl, Fran, oh, from chicks in the yeah. office, she's going to eat this shit up. She, she, she is. And she is. And she is. Um, so it wasn't so, too bad being alone this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot to think about. Um, he, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so he's been posting a bunch of teasers for it. Maybe it looks like a new music video. And on Saturday, he's double duty SNL, the musical guest and the host, which is huge. Very cool opportunity for him. And I hope he, you know, hope he gets to show off his his acting chops. He'll be, I think he'll do a great job. So that's exciting as he'll be in, in New York all week. But I think there was also a lot of questions of like, is this a bad sign for the Jonas Brothers that Nick is doing solo mm-hmm. music. Mm-hmm. And my answer to all those people is no, I don't think it is. I think that when they agreed to do the Jonas Brothers again, they also agreed that they would do their own stuff. Like Joe had always said that DNCE was not over. They were, he was still going to do stuff with DNC. And Nick, who is married, obviously we know that, but we talked to Priyanka. Priyanka is... Priyanka's working her ass off. She's got, she's doing all these projects. She's working her ass off. 
And Nick, I feel like potentially because they had to put the Jonas Brothers stuff on hold with COVID and the, the new stuff didn't come out when it, when they wanted it to. And then Sophie Turner had a baby. Like they, Nick has a young, uh, Joe has a young baby now at home. So it's like, all right, maybe this is the perfect time for Nick to do some solo stuff and to do his own stuff while Kevin's at home and Joe's at home with the new baby and they can kind of like focus their own thing. And Nick is doing the, they're filming the voice right now. And so Nick's like, yeah, this is perfect timing. Let's I'll, I'll do solo music now for until we're all ready to get back together and do Jones brother stuff. Yeah. I think that's a fair assessment. I had the same thought when you, when you said that to me about people being worried about the Jonas brothers, but that you thought that they all all had the agreement that they would still do their solo thing, which I think is, is 100% true because I don't think that they would have gotten the Jonas brothers back together if they didn't all come to the agreement that they were also allowed to do separate things. Because I think what caused the Jonas brothers to fall apart apart the first time was the fact that they were working on solo projects, separate things. They were, you know, feeling angsty uh, against the group. They wanted to act out because all they were doing was Jonas brothers stuff. They didn't have, their own space to be creative in their own way. But now they get to do both. They get to be the Jonas Brothers together and then on their own, they can create whichever music they like. The music that Nick Jonas puts out is not necessarily going to be the music that Kevin and Joe vibe with or the music they want to put out as the Jonas Brothers. So I feel like it's important for all of them to exercise all of those things and and their creative (laughs) creativity. There's yeah. so many creative words, creative, creativeness, yep. creativity, yeah. which one, which one do I go with um, yes. to express their creativity and exercise that. So I feel like this is exciting for Nick Jonas. I feel like, you know, people, they were in lockdown and quarantine, just like everybody else. So you're not going to be with, with Joe and Kevin working on music. You're going to be alone. You're going to be working on things yourself. Mm-hmm. So I think this is exciting for Nick Jonas. And it's been some time that he's released something alone because he was mm-hmm. working on the Jonas Brothers stuff. And I feel like we will get more Jonas Brothers music as well. I don't think it's mm-hmm. the end of the Jonas Brothers again. I don't think they would do that to us. I just think that we are getting both, which is exciting. It's just a dream come true. Really. I never thought <laughs> we would be at this point where I could confidently say like, yeah, I think we're getting solo music and I, and I'm not worried about the Jonas Brothers. So that's great. That makes me feel good. And yeah, this has been a, it was such a long, such a long year and they weren't really able to put anything out. And Nick is such a creative person. Like, I just feel like in lockdown, he probably wrote 9 million songs and some of them George Brothers songs, some of them Nick Jonas solo songs, and it all came together to, to form this album or whatever he's putting out. It seems like Spaceman that's coming out on, on Thursday um, is a single which is, I mean, I'm just, I'm very excited. Release the merch, Nick. Yes. Because I need that Spaceman cover art on a t-shirt ASAP. For a while, I thought he was working with Elton John, maybe. And I was like, wow, what a come up for Nick Jonas. Because <laughs> he kept putting all these rocket emojis. Thought it was a little hint that Elton, Elton John was making a feature with Nick Jonas. Yeah. Hey, you <laughs> but, never know. Maybe. Hey, you, hey, you never, never know. know. One, one can only hope. Yeah, I mean, Elton has an appearance in Demi Lovato's documentary, yeah. so you Good know. Good point. Unless Good he picks point. Si- unless he picks sides, and he's and he's. I, mm, you know what? That's Lovato. another Team Good Lovato. point. And maybe he may be t- he may be able to relate to Demi Lovato more than the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, yeah, but very exciting. Happy for Nick. Can't wait for the new music and Saturday Night Live. I think that's you know I I have not watched a Saturday night live in quite some time, but I will be watching his. Am I the only one that doesn't get excited when I see somebody's going on Saturday night live? You and you and Noah, you, when you guys see somebody's going on Saturday night live, well, when it's you guys that you send love. each other, but Saturday night live has fallen off so much that yeah, I, I, know, I, I know, saw I that know. they are now, but it's still just like to book people this, on Saturday night live. Yeah. It's I don't still know like how a, true an that iconic is, show. Like, it is an yeah. iconic show, but it's, it's oh yeah, it's not terrible. Near, yeah, yeah. I watched <laughs> I think them it's last night. It was really pretty... hard with. Co- I think it's been really hard with COVID because, like, there's so many celebrities who don't necessarily like need to do SNL right now to promote their stuff because they mm-hmm. can just do it all from home and kind of the undertaking of you know like maybe getting to New York, quarantining, testing. You know, there's like 
feel like there's a lot of a lot of rules and people just don't have as much stuff to to promote i guess but, I also think yeah. doing SNL is something that people like to just cross off their bucket list, even right. though it's, it it's doesn't have that 100%. same power that 100%. it used to. It's more so like, oh, I did that's, SNL. I can cross it yeah. off my list. Yeah, that's got to be a massive celebrity bucket list is right. like to especially I mean, he the Jonas Brothers have have done it before, but to do um the do, like to host and be the guest solo yeah, like, yourself is really cool. So like not a Harry lot of people Styles, get that opportunity. Harry Styles yeah. crushed that when right. he's both absolutely right it. exactly so there's there's definitely people when that i see when they're going on saturday night live that i get excited for them like okay that i will watch mm-hmm. and nick jonas i will be tuning in <laughs> all right that wraps up today's episode of chicks in the office we hope you guys had a great weekend hopefully this monday leads you into a fantastic week we will talk to you all on wednesday for that bachelorette no 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 the bachelor Bachelor. see that's what happens (laughs) when you go back to back with it we'll talk to you on wednesday for the bachelor recap love you guys bye